Um, so just before my 30th birthday, um, I found out that I was pregnant. Um, I was really happy. I was really excited. Um, having lost two children previously, I really wanted to be a mum. And I went to the doctors and I had my pregnancy confirmed. Um, and I went home all excited and I waited for my partner to come home. And um, I sat him down and told him that I was pregnant, expecting him to be really happy and really excited. Um, unfortunately, his response was, well, who told you you could get pregnant? I don't want a baby. I've never wanted a baby. We've never discussed this. I don't want it. You need to get rid of it. At the time, I was in shock. I thought maybe he was in shock as well. Um, and so I kept going, um, but every day he would come back and tell me again that he didn't want to have a baby. It wasn't in his plan. He didn't want it. But I kept going because I thought that maybe he'd change his mind and it wasn't what I wanted. Um, and then as time progressed, he started getting more and more demanding about the fact of me going to have an abortion. Um, he would tell me, have you spoken to anyone? Have you told anyone? Um, have you started finding out how you can get rid of the baby? Um, and I just kept trying to change the subject. And then he started threatening me that if I didn't get rid of the baby, he would. Um, I didn't think he would do anything. Um, he'd already been quite physical towards me. Um, and I think possibly um, the baby was conceived through him raping me, um, which he regularly did. And um, so I thought nothing of it. And then one day he wanted to show me that he really did mean that if I didn't get rid of the baby, he would. And he pushed me down the stairs. I think for me, this was the turning point because I thought I can't protect myself from him and there's no way I can protect the baby. So I went online and I found out where I could go and have an abortion. And when I went to see the, the doctor, um, he asked me why I wanted an abortion. I lied because nobody knew that I was in a domestic violence relationship. Nobody had any idea. And I was embarrassed and I was ashamed. And so I told the doctor that the reason I was thinking of having an abortion was because I couldn't afford a baby because I had no money and I had no way of looking after a baby. So I then had to go see another doctor. And I think the one thing that I really wasn't prepared for was the first time I had a sonogram and the first time I heard my baby's heartbeat and saw my baby on a screen was when I was planning to terminate it. And that was the hardest thing. And then I had to go back to the clinic again. Um, so I have the first tablet. Um, and then I had to go back again for the second. And then I had to remain um, because they weren't happy with um, how my body was reacting to the, to the drugs. I then was, had to go to hospital. So I was taken to hospital and it was in a private room. And that's where I had to labor and terminate my baby on my own in a room. And I, I never forgive myself for the decision that I made. And I should have spoken out. And I should have told people what was happening. But I never had the courage to do so. Um, so... While I was in hospital and while I was going through um, the abortion procedure, um, all that time, I thought that, you know, my partner would have reached out to me to check that I was okay, um, but he didn't. Um, and after I'd had the abortion, I had to spend the night in hospital. And when I was released the next day, um, they wouldn't release me until, until I was in somebody else's care. Um, and my partner wasn't connecting with me, wasn't answering my messages, my calls. Um, so I ended up bringing a friend and I ended up staying at my friend's house for a week. 
um, just till I felt a bit more myself that I could go back home and the entire time was away. There was no contact. And I, I think this confused me because I thought, well, I've done what you've asked me to do, but you don't want anything to do with me. And I think that then made me make this decision that I didn't need to be with him. I didn't deserve to be with him. And it gave me the strength to leave him. And I did. Um, and, you know, my, my life became better because no longer was I being, you know, abused and harassed and, and bullied and belittled. And I don't think I realised at the time um, how controlling he was and how much influence he had over my life. Um, he'd already alienated me from my family and my friends. Um, so I took the, the long task of rebuilding those relationships with everybody. Um, and then um, I sort of had to rebuild my life. But it was hard because I had this grief for a baby that I had aborted and I felt like there was nowhere to turn um, and years later um, when I was in mass um, somebody came to talk to us about Rachel's vineyard and it hit, a, it hit a nerve and I felt like I needed to reach out and I did and I went on a retreat and it was the best thing I did because I could speak to other people in the same situation as me and it really helped. Um, and I've got to meet new friends who've been through what I've been through. And it's given me the confidence not to be ashamed of the decision I make, but to help others. <laughs> um, my advice to anybody who would feel that they are in a similar situation to where I was would be, please speak out, please tell somebody. Please be open and honest about what you're going through. It's never acceptable to be in a situation like that where you feel that you have no choice. Um, there are always people who are willing to listen. And I know it's really, really hard. But it's, you know, it's better than having to deal with the grief at this end of it and sit back and have regrets about what life could have been like. If you're somebody who's had an abortion and you want to know where to go next to get some help, um, I found Rachel's Vineyard really, really useful. They're someone I'd never heard of and it was just a chance meeting in church that they were talking and that I heard about the great work that they do. But I strongly recommend they can really help. I never stop thinking about the child that I don't have. Um, I talk to them on a regular basis. I have little conversations with what they'd be up to, how old they'd be, what year they'd be in school. Um, I celebrate their birthday every year because I'll never forget that date. I have really big concerns um, about the abortions tablets that they send in the post because for somebody like me who wanted a baby and had a partner who didn't, it makes life so much easier for that partner to get rid of the child they don't want. They can force someone to make the call. You can lie on the call about how pregnant you actually are. You know, you could probably sit and, you know, try and keep the baby and put the tablets to one side and not take them and then take them later than you're meant to, which could cause you more harm. Um, you know, the partner could even drug you somehow by making you take the tablets if they really wanted to. And there's just no care. Nobody checks on the person who's actually having the abortion. If I'd have had the uh, tablet sent by post and been unwell like I was when I had my abortion, there would have been nobody to check on me. And I may not have ended up in hospital and I may have ended up in a worse situation. Um, if I could send a message out to religious leaders all over the world, it would be that abortion isn't a topic that we don't need to talk about. It's one that we do need to talk about because only by talking about it will people be able to know that it's okay to talk about it and to ask for help and they won't be so ashamed to ask for that help. So please make it an open, honest topic because I would never have heard of Rachel's Vineyard if somebody hadn't allowed Rachel to talk in the church that I was visiting. <laughs>